Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Jiffy Steamer, the largest steamer manufacturer in the world. It started in 1940 right here in O'Brien County, Tennessee. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at jiffysteamer.com. Thank you, Emily, and welcome everybody to Discovery Park of America, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee, and I am Scott Williams, your host. Emily, before I introduce today's guests, what is something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of space. And if you stand in the moon dome in STEM landing and listen carefully, you can hear a recording of the dialogue between Apollo 11 astronauts on the moon and NASA mission control back on Earth in July 20 of 1969. Upon taking the first steps on the surface of the moon that day, Neil Armstrong uttered what would become one of the history's most famous one-liners, as we all know. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, that's a great discovery. Now, I know that in your office you have like some paintings from, is that Star Trek or Star Wars? It's Star Wars, yeah. Star Wars, I get them mixed up. Yeah, I have a Baby Yoda and a Chewbacca. Yeah, so are you a fan of like legit space or are you a a fan of like sci-fi space movies and writing? and Both. I went to space camp when I was younger in elementary school in Huntsville, Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center and just fell in love with space there. And so my mom was also a huge fan of Star Wars. So I kind of got love for that in space from the movies and just like experiencing space through a museum. So it's kind of cool at all the space stuff we have here at Discovery Park. Excellent. Well, thank you. I discovered something new about you today. (laughs) So our special guest, Emily is not our guest, although she could be. Um, Our special guest today is Ms. Gwendolyn Hopkins, who goes by Comedian Ms. Gwen is her stage name. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here with you guys. It is. Now, Ms. Gwen... Comedian Ms. Gwen is sitting outside at UT Martin because, as I understand it, that is your day gig. Is that right? That's right. That's correct. Yes. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what you do uh, for fun. But first of all, I want to I want to go back earlier and tell me a little bit about where you're from, your childhood, things like that. Okay, I had a really great childhood. I was born and raised in Lake County in Ridgely, Tennessee, not too far from here. And uh, I am number six of seven children. Um, We're all living. Thank God for that. We don't always get along, but we are still in love with each other. You know, (laughs) (laughs) we are a good family. I love my family. I really do. Um, so you were almost you were almost a baby of well, the I was family. supposed to be the baby, but you know, daddy got greedy and <laughs> next thing I know, here comes that other one, you know, but I don't hold it against her anymore. I outgrew that. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be the baby. Mom was through, but daddy wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It is, it is. <laughs> and so you uh, grew up in a big family, I'm assuming, yeah. and, yeah. you know, everybody, you know, was uh, having fun. And so maybe that's some of the genesis of how you became funny. You had to figure out a way to get some attention. Of course, of course. And I was the best at it. Everybody tried, but, you know, I kind of excelled in the thing, you know, it's like uh, <laughs> my dad was the funniest person alive to me. And he had a way of making other people laugh but would not laugh himself, like at his own jokes. He knew he was being funny, but he just wouldn't laugh. He would have a straight face. And I, I've always thought that to be um, just amazing. I'm like, someday I want to do that, but I'm not good at it because I'll laugh at my own jokes, whether they're funny or not. You know, I'm going to laugh. But it's, I think it came from my dad. because he, Like I said, he was the funniest person to me ever, ever. Now I've got lots of friends and, um, you know, that some, some are funny, some are not, some think they're funny, Right. Um, right. (laughs) (laughs) but, but some of them, you know, I say to them, you know, Hey, you ought to be a comedian. You ought to be on stage. Mm -hmm. And so far, none of them ever have. Apparently people said that to you and you took them up on it. I did. Cause I've, I've, I've basically heard it all my life. I have like just made people laugh since I can remember. And, um, 
I guess within the last maybe five, six years, I, I started to get that a whole lot. You know, you should do this professionally. You should do this. You should do this. And I took them up on it and I finally did it. And I just fell in love with it immediately. I did. It's like nothing like the microphone in your hand. Absolutely nothing like it. It's a feeling. Like How did it come to be? How did you end up uh, actually finally putting that microphone in your hand and getting on stage? Short story. My pastors, um, I think it was their fifth or sixth anniversary, and they were looking for entertainment for the gala that we were having. And it just came to me, this would be a good night to, you know, to, to kind of show your talent. So I got with the lady that was in charge. I'm like, I want to do some comedy tonight. Well, she knew, you know, I was funny. I, I cut up all the time. And she said, okay, that's cool. So I went on stage that night and just been doing it ever since. I mean, ever since. How did you, uh, you know, somebody who has never uh, been on stage before, you know, there's a difference between being funny Mm -hmm. and actually being able to deliver on stage. What did you do to prepare? Well, I I guess basically I have watched comedians all my life, you know, like the the big names, the priors and the, the, the whoever's and it just came so easy to them. Well, they made it look easy. I'm sure it wasn't after, you know, after trying it myself. No, it's not easy. I won't say it is. But they made it look so easy. And I kind of, you know, just picked up a lot of uh, different pointers from, like, well-known comedians. So when I did it, it was just like a breeze to me. And so who were some of the ones that you watched? Oh, my Lord. Richard Pryor, of course. He, to me, next to my dad, was the funniest man alive. Of course, Eddie Murphy and... Oh, goodness. There's one uh, Christian comedian whose name escapes me right now, but he's very, very funny. But it was several, several that kind of uh, gave me some inspiration. And so you started working and you mentioned that you've been working ever since. Um, what mm-hmm. What are some of the how, do, how does somebody go about um, writing jokes? How do you how do you end up with a set of material that's funny that you can deliver? Life. <laughs> I can take a situation and turn it into a joke immediately. I mean, just different things happen, you know, with a coworker, a friend, a relative. My grandbabies are a big part of my set. They don't know it, but they are. Uh, just anything, you know, just whatever happens, I can I can joke about it. Somebody may not think it's funny until I joke about it, but you know, just life itself is where I get a lot of material. And so we're going to take a really quick break here. And then when we get back, I'm going to ask you more questions about being a comedian in Northwest Tennessee. Jiffy Steamer offers the world's finest clothing steamers, steaming products, and steamer accessories. They have been made in the USA since 1940 and now have more than 1,000 dealers across 55 countries. Jiffy Steamers are trusted by professionals such as Macy's, Neiman Marcus, Coach, and others. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at JiffySteamer.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our guest today is Gwendolyn Hopkins, a comedian here in Northwest Tennessee. Now, we're going to let's let's uh, listen for a second and listen to a uh, one of your sets uh, that took place not too long ago. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) I'm going to start this thing off telling y'all a little story. Something happened to me yesterday. (laughs) A friend of mine tried to kill me. (laughs) But but my will to live is just too strong for me. We we had a little get-together at at my sister's house yesterday, and we was all in the swimming pool. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I can't swim. I can't swim a lick. But I know what to do when I get in the water. You get in there, and you be still. <laughs> so that's what I did. I was floating around on the raft, you know, real still. You know, had that little leg cocked up like I really knew what I was doing. Well, my friend over there, <laughs> with the blonde hair who won't look at me. She can't swim a lick either. But she don't know the rules. She don't know to be still in the water. She bouncing around and can on, turning upside down, turning flips and what have you. Fell out that boat. <laughs> she was behind. She was behind me. I didn't know the baby had done fell in the water until she grabbed my rat. Let that go. <laughs> 
Today is not the day I die. I know that because I'm here to stay. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now I can laugh at it now. I was really scared for her at the time because she looked at me once she finally did get out of the water and said, uh, you was going to let me drown. There ain't nothing I can do about it. It ain't that I was going to let you. What am I supposed to do if I can't swim? Neither. What am I supposed to do? Huh? Ain't no sense in both of us drowning. One person drowned at a time. That's the house rule. But anyway, I love her. Bless her heart. She's here and I really thank God for her. Cousin. It was a, it was a dangerous situation. But like I said, I can laugh at it now. But hindsight is 2020. It was funny because when she was in the water, I looked, I looked at her and that baby had a hand reaching. I'm like, is she wanting God to grab her hand? What is she doing? <laughs> she never screamed, never hollered. She was just reaching up. I'm like, God, get her. Because <laughs> I can't help her. So that was really funny. So um, mm -hmm. I love I love hearing hearing the audience's reaction. I'm guessing you tell me if I'm right or wrong okay. that that is a lot of what fuels you to do what you do. Definitely, definitely. I've only had uh, since I've been doing this. I've had two bomb shows, and to bomb is like death to me. But if I get one person to laugh, then it's it's off to a great start. So yeah. Laughter fuels me. It does. Like, what is it? What is it like when you stand up there and give it your all, and you get no laughs? Deadly. <laughs> it's I can deadly. imagine. It's not fun at all. It's not. But you have to keep going, whether they laugh or not. Because I've, I've I've witnessed um, comedians, you know, bomb and they walk off stage. I refuse to walk off stage. I'm going to stay here till the end, whether you laugh or not. You know, I was here. You know. So it's, it's, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. And so you're, you're obviously not living in New York where there are comedy clubs or in Vegas or anywhere like that. So, you know, where does somebody who's got the skills that you have, where do you get to use them here in Northwest Tennessee? Oh, basically anywhere. I do uh, comedy clubs in um, Memphis. There are comedy club, well, a comedy club that I know of in uh, Nashville, but uh, mostly it's like functions, like private functions. There may be a um, church function or some kind of banquet, class reunion, barbecue, whatever. You know, if they're paying, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but I do do comedy clubs as well. Yeah, that's, have you ever have you ever played a club like in Vegas or anything like that? I have not, but I had an opportunity. COVID kind of knocked that out of the water for me. That broke my heart. And they're claiming to reschedule, but I had a tour where I was going to start in Vegas and end up in, I want to say, Minnesota. And uh, that was canceled because of COVID the early part of last year. And I also had a uh, cruise. I've never been on a cruise, but I never performed on a cruise. So I hadn't done either one. But I was excited about that, too. And that was scheduled for October of last year. Of course, COVID knocked that out of the water, too. But hopefully, uh, these people say they're going to reschedule. So. I'm waiting because it's something I would love to do. I would love to do Vegas. Yeah. That's something you don't really think about. Um, you know, of all, you know, that has been impacted by COVID as well, probably more so than just about anything else. Oh, definitely. Um, have you, have you been able to use, you know, I guess, are you able to use social media at all in what you do or do you feed off so much the live audience that it's not really helpful? Well, it, it's, I do social media. It's not the same feeling. And it's a little harder because uh, a lot of people are muted. They won't, you know, just, and, and you can beg them all day long to unmute yourself. So I can hear you laughing, but they won't do it. So it's a lot harder to do um, social media, but I still do it. I do do uh, comedy on social media. So, but I'd rather be on stage. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. Um, now let's talk a little bit. I know that uh, your faith is a big part of your yeah. um, career as well. So you obviously don't work blue, as they say in the comedy business. You are a clean comedian. I am a um, clean comedian, yes. As they say. So tell me a little bit about your faith and you know how that plays into what you do. Okay. Uh, of course, I was born a Baptist, and and of course now you know we we grow up and we kind of venture out, and now I'm kind of non-denomination and. Um, I believe in prayer, you know, and I'm, I'm praying and asking God daily, you know, to guide me to where it is you want me to be. Show me what it is you want me to do. And um, he's constantly revealing it to me because this is what I'm supposed to do. And it's supposed to be a full time thing. As much as I love human resources, it's not where I'm going to 
died. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, just follow what God says. Well, and we talked we talked a little bit about the fact that you were at UT Martin, but we didn't mm-hmm. mention that that is where that you're in human resources. So yeah. um, I'm sure that in human resources, you see a lot of opportunities to use your sense of humor. I do. I do. <laughs> because, you know, there's uh, and it's probably much appreciated by people that are nervous and that are right. applying for jobs. Right. Um, right. You know, my wife works at UT Martin. I wonder if you really? uh, dealt with her. Yeah, her name's Michelle. She's in art history. Oh, we may have spoken on the phone. I talk to everybody basically every day, but I haven't really faces. I don't know that many, but we may have spoken on the phone, but I'm going to have to look her up though. Michelle. Yeah, look up, look up Michelle Williams. She teaches Michelle. art history. I sure will. I'll do that. So tell me a little bit about your work with the National Action Network here okay. in Tennessee. Um, of course, it, it's an organization founded by Reverend Al Sharpton in uh, 2001, I believe. But I am the vice president of the Tennessee chapter. We're, we're a fairly new chapter. We started the chapter back in 2004, but uh, we were so young and eager to we blew it. So um, we're all grown and you know, we have learned from mistakes. So we're trying it again. And uh, I, like I said, I am the vice president of the organization, and we're just out to just help anybody that needs help in whatever area with civil rights, you know. Um, and when people say civil rights, you know, they automatically jump to black people, but white people have civil rights, too. So if you got an issue, you know, hey, holler. But um, that's, that's, that's what it is with the National Action Network. And it's an organization that I'm proud to be a part of. Well, and it's, you know, it's. Certainly, you have to deal with with them with some more um, serious things. So you're working on both sides, right, um, right. of the spectrum. Then mm-hmm. that's true. Um, so what are you? What are your plans? So now um, you have gotten almost through COVID. We're mm-hmm. we're. I think we're just about to turn the page. I think so too. Yeah. What what <laughs> what are you? What have you got planned? Uh, just to be on stage, uh, things are starting to pick up since COVID is is not completely gone, but it's, it's I think it's a lot better than what it was. I don't think the numbers are lying, so things are starting to pick up as far as you know me being hired to to do different functions and events. So right now, my main goal is just to keep them laughing. Okay, before we go, let's listen to one more set from you and listen to some of your humor. We're listening to the humor of. Comedian Ms. Gwynn. <laughs> My friend babies are strange. They, they, they some strange little babies. I love them, but they some strange little babies. They, whatever they think come out their mouth. <laughs> Me and the oldest one was sitting on the couch one night. She was seven at the time. We was watching something on TV and a horse went through. She said, Nana, how old am I in, not a horse, a dog, same thing. How old am I in, <laughs> <laughs> they all got four legs. I said, baby, you're seven, you'd be 49. She said, that's right, now. I said, well, how old would I be? Ella Rester looked at me and said, Nana, you'd be dead. <laughs> Our relationship ain't been the same since. I love that little baby, but you keep your distance from me. Where online can we find your schedule so that whenever it is, we know where we can find you? Okay. That would be my uh, promo page, uh, Facebook promo page. It's, it's entitled Miss Gwen. It's totally different from the comedian Miss Gwen page because that's where I cut up. But all the events and what have you, I put on my promo page, which is Miss Gwen. Awesome. And we'll put a link to your Facebook page in the show notes for the podcast. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, uh, taking a few minutes and talking to us. It is a beautiful day I can see out there in Martin. So um, I know you're enjoying sitting out there um, in the beautiful weather. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) It's starting to get hot. It was fairly nice when I came out, but it ain't nice no more. (laughs) Well, next time we'll do. (laughs) Next time we'll do it here at Discovery Park indoors. Sounds good air conditioning, everything. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. I do. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening. 
plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.